Today, we're at the Central Washington Agriculture Museum, and we wanted to talk about this 40s Dodge. I'll tell you what year this is in the information section of this. This is going to be a great truck to talk about. Thanks for joining All Vehicles Great and Small. I'm your host, Tammy Walker. All right, we're going to start at the front. Of course, we got the headlights. We've got our marker lights. Got a little light right over here. We've got the original bumper. Now, this was not originally blue. It's either yellow or red. One of those colors come across. I love this. This is just amazing, this design here. I mean, you do not see stuff like this very often. This is just gorgeous. Some emblems here. Hood ornaments, they call that. Coming all the way down. Look at this. All the way down. And here, once again... We've got that crank start hole, put it in through here. And we'll see when we get inside, that radiator is back about a foot and a half from the front. Get these big, huge fenders. Open the hood, we would just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Come in there. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Some more little lights up here like we're missing the mirror would go on the hinges let's take a look down here this one is very similar to the ford next to it this one says ford this one doesn't say anything is there anything special inside well you can see some vents for the engine um if anybody's had old vehicles they realize they get hot very quick and having these vents keep it help keep it cool overheated many times in older vehicles and there's different little things we do to help ourselves out i love these steps yeah having to drive with a heater on yeah especially the hill around here all right we'll come through and talk about this in a few more minutes we'll go inside but we've got the key lock here just on this side and the handle and we'll come past here now they converted this truck into a a, a house fuel or house oil. oil a fuel oil truck so they would come to your house and fill up your oil for your heat up down we've got this nice big frame coming across we got dualies. Yep. Dually system. We've got our, our uh, exhaust system coming across that way. Take a look underneath. This is, I know the, to the tires are flat, but this is still pretty dang low. If you pop up the tires like four or five inches, I mean, that only four or five more inches underneath that does not have the best ground clearance. I love the cartoon effect when you look, if you turn and look at the, the uh, fenders, how they stick out kind of cartoon-like away from the truck. That's so interesting. All right, we'll come back here. Let's take a look at some of this stuff. Kind of interesting little steps here. Little step, step, step. Just gonna go. Ugh. Get up here. The top of the cab, you see it's got a little point there. In the center, kind of interesting. And yeah, oh wow, that step is, uh, I don't recommend stepping on this very much more. <laughs> All right, we'll come to the back. Last registered year, 1988. It says independent fuel company, Stove diesel oil, phone number 8011. <laughs> Spare tire, the Eldorado. 
little components in here for the operating the fuel system. Looks like a little mini carburetor on a little some sort of pump system. It's got some little levers over here you'd turn on and off. Very cool. I'll come back to that. Tiny little bumper, the little brake lights, marker lights, reflectors, little lights up here. Come around to this side. Pretty dang flat tires. <laughs> Some more little steps. This one's a little bit easier. It's got a closer step there. Got things bungeed together. Obviously, when it came here, it probably wasn't uh, in 100% condition. Here's our fuel cap, and that goes right into this tank right here in the, underneath the cab. You can see that. All right, this does not have the key. And this side is broken, so we'll go into the other side and take a look inside this truck. There's a little light up here, too. I didn't notice on the other side. Yeah, there's one up there, too. I like that. All right, we'll go inside, and then we'll take a look at the uh, uh, engine. All right. Looks like the seat comes off much easier, kind of like the, the truck behind me, the Ford behind me. See under there? Mm. Well, you can see all the way under. That push that in. Okay, this is our PTO operated. It's either on or off or in and out. We've got our emergency brake. Pull that, and this lever is the releaser. Look at this beautiful heater core. I mean, this is gorgeous. We've seen a lot of heater cores and trucks in this series. And none of them have been as beautiful as this one. And the second place goes to the Ford next to me. That had a nice uh, system too. Come down in here. I'm going to come across. This is how I get dirty. Oh, we've got our headliners kind of de bowed down in here. So uh, looking at this side here, let's take a look here. So you're open and closer handle for your door. Here's your window open and closing here, and it's the same on your side. We've got our glove box. No markings in it. And then let's see, let's take a look up. Now this, you could open or close this, and, and it would bring this out. Pretty cool. And these have the vacuum operated windshield wiper. So here's the switch for this side. Here's the switch for this side. Your assembly's up up in here. And look at this. This side, our heat, our oil, our speedometer, our fuel, and our amps. And then We've got knob, 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 an empty hole, and then a knob right here. An empty hole would have been your ignition hand right here. Ah, okay, there, there's our ignition. Do I see, and this must be the starter for the ignition. You'd push that, bop, 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 and it'd start up. Turn the key on, bop, 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 start up. Usually you got to give a couple pumps of gas, two to four, depending on your vehicle. So we've got our clutch, this oval, our brake, and then our gas pedal. Over here is our dimmer for our bright switch. It's on the floor. And what's this here, a turn indicator? You know, this kind of looks aftermarket to me. It's it's way too 60s 
design Napa. <laughs> so definitely, we have another knob over here. I am just taking a look at other things. Don't see much more. That looks pretty good. And just uh, take a picture of the back here. Oh, look at this seat. This seat would fold forward, and this seat, you pick it up. So the hinges are right here on it. So, yeah, like that. All right, and then our headliner, of course, is coming down. Let's go take a look at the engine. Got a little badge over here. I actually do have the year of this truck written down, but not here on me. No, I'm not uh, really getting a visual on these, so. Okay, nice. What do we got in this old Dodge? This is a straight six flat head. No, oh, this is in block valve. No overhead valve. All right. And this is a gas engine because we got spark plugs. This is our oil bath hooked down to our carburetor. Intake manifold, exhaust manifold. This little guy controls the temperature of your manifold. This is spring operated. Once your engine comes to a certain temperature, this little weighted cam lever will change and let you run better when it's warm. Oh, well, that's something. Hmm. It's coming this way. Take a peek. Old horn back there reminds me of a snail. <laughs> Nautilus shell. All right, we'll take a look at the other side. Oh, yeah. Well, there we go. Hey, we're taking a look at this 1946 Dodge pickup, two ton. This is the W series, and these trucks were also known as the Dodge job rated trucks. Well, our story starts in 1939. Dodge had streamlined their whole line of cars and trucks with this Art Deco design, updating and modernizing everything except for the already updated drivetrains. This was called the T-Series. In 1940, they kept everything and then gave it the V-Series name. And then 1941 was the W-Series, still pretty much the same as the other two series. And the W-Series was from 1941 to 1947. The 1939 to 1947 job rated trucks were a defining moment in Dodge history. They were first to be mass produced in the new Warren truck plant. Dodge wanted to create a custom truck for the customer, their experience compared to buying shoes, and offered over 20 different wheelbase lengths and six different payload classes. The W series had the light duty and medium duty trucks. The light duty was half ton, three quarter ton and one ton and the medium duty was two and three ton. I believe this truck is a two ton. Between 1942 and 1945 Dodge ended civilian production for these trucks and made them for the government for World War II. They were more focused on engineering and production instead of looks so that's why this style lasted for so long. 
And what's special about the 1946 truck is it was the first year that they began to sell back to the civilians again after World War II. The W Series successor was the B Series from 1948 to 53. And the predecessor to this series was the 1936 to 1938 L, M, and R series. The job rated trucks from 1939 to 1947 used the flathead six engines originally designed by Plymouth. The half ton had the 201 cubic inch engine at 70 horsepower, but by 1941, they had upgraded it to 82.5 horsepower. And in 1942, the 201 engine was replaced with the 218 in the half ton truck, and the one tons were upgraded to the 230 which offered 102 horsepower. I believe this truck is a two ton, but as I was reading more information, they also made a two and a half ton beside the three ton. The two ton would have either the 241 cubic inch engine or the 251. The two and a half ton had the 281 cubic inch gas engine and the three ton had the 331 cubic inch gas engine. The three speed manual was standard with the option of a four speed with compound first gear. The 1939 to 1947 models TK, TL, WK, and WL were available with a diesel engine. Dodge was the first of the big three US automakers to offer diesel powered trucks. And Chrysler engineered and built its heavy duty diesel engines under one roof. The diesel series is one of the most popular with collectors considering 75 were sold in 1939, 134 in 1940, and 195 in 1941. The TV and W series has also been known as the DB, DC, DD series from Canada, the Fargo FH, FJ, FK series, the Plymouth PT series, and the Dodge D15 for Canada and Europe. They were made in Warren, Michigan, Windsor, Ontario, Los Angeles, California, and Kew in the United Kingdom. And a quick little history of Dodge. Brothers Horace and John Dodge started Dodge Brothers Company in the early 1900s. They supplied parts and assemblies to Detroit automakers. By 1914, the Dodge Brothers were building automobiles. However, in 1920, both brothers passed away. The Spanish flu claimed John and Horace died from cirrhosis of the liver. Their family sold the company to Dylan Reed and Company in 1925, and with Chrysler buying Dodge in 1928. They are now a division of Stellantis North America. If you have any information or comments you have about this truck or stories, we would love to hear about it below in the comment section. And remember to like and subscribe to our channel. It helps us grow. We have more trucks we want to share with you. And there's so many great trucks here. And I would love to show you each and every one of these. We actually already did that white down there. So it'll be so exciting. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.